Good morning. Am I audible enough? Yeah. So, as you can see, my talk is pretty simple. It's about the role of e-health, because Digital India is something that we are looking forward to. It's a flagship program of the current government, and e-health will definitely play a major role in it. And obviously, that is also very much related to monitoring, measuring, and improving the quality of healthcare delivery. If you look at the formal statement for the Digital India initiatives, so in the fifth pillar, pillar that is e-kranti, in the electronic delivery of services, the healthcare is there, the things which you are supposed to have, online medical consultation, online medical records, online medicine supply, and a pan-India exchange for health information exchange. Of course, the timeline is a bit delayed, we could have it by 2015, but 2017 certainly we are going to have the processes very much on. If you look at the other initiatives, um, these are not new ones actually, these have been going on for quite a few years, but many people probably are not yet aware. As a part of the open data policy, this data.gov.in portal, if you have a look, all the ministries do sub submit a lot of data in open data format so that anyone can download it and analyze it, run the analytics for whichever domain it's required. And health is obviously one of those, even we have some data uploaded there. So those of you who are interested, looking for data and don't know where to find, do visit this data.gov.in and you can download the data that you're looking for, run your own analytics, bring us more insights. That's the purpose. The National Health Portal was formally launched in 14, 2014, November 2014. And currently it has got only six languages. Other than English, Hindi, there's Tamil, Gujarati, Mangla, and Punjabi. But we are going to have in all the 22 languages that are there in the schedule 8 of the Constitution of India. And internet penetration as of date in India is hardly 30%. But if you look at the mobile penetration, it's probably more than 80%. And Computer, I mean, computers are now less used. Mobiles are more used for accessing the internet. In India, since June 2012, this trend has been going on widening. So more and more people are accessing the World Wide Web through their smartphones rather than through a desktop or a laptop. Uh, definitely, but despite that, as I said, where we don't have the connectivity, we also have a toll-free number, 1800-1801-104 where people who are not having access can call it or those who have problems in accessing the web or even literacy problems. So they can call and right now it's available in five languages but that also we are going to include all the languages in near future. So a person can call at the store free number and get the information that's available in the portal. So the other national initiatives that are going on and these are going on actually in parallel. In fact, only yesterday we had a meeting on this. So like the Aadhaar for individuals, even for the healthcare facilities, a unique number is being provided that's going to be permanent and unique. That's been called the NIN or the National Identification Number. We are going to also develop the National Healthcare Resources Repository, NHR, and the Central Bureau of Health Intelligence is in the process of doing it, collecting all the facilities, government, of public as well as private, including the labs, and they will all be geotagged, geocoding will be there. Similarly, as we know, this insurance information bureau, they have the Rohini database of some, I think, 36,000 hospitals as of date. So we are trying to integrate them. We are going to have a number which is unique and permanent, even if the healthcare facility is no more existing. The number is not given to someone else. And this will definitely be very useful in tracking. Once we are thinking of electronic health records, and when we are thinking of targeting a population of 1.3 billion, I think that would be a very important thing. How do you start identifying? So it's not just the individuals, but also the facilities that will come inside it. And we are definitely trying to have it in a way so that there is no duplication or confusion, ambiguity at any stage. Since uh, April 2014, 
India has become a member, country member for so much, it is a medical vocabulary standard or a clinical terminology standard, you can say. And globally, for standards, a lot of harmonization work is going on. So ICD-11 that is expected by 2018 will actually have a one-to-one -one map with stomach CT. Stomach CT granularity is obviously much more for clinical uh, data, and especially for data analytics, clinical decision support system, and other analytic works. Stomach CT is inherently built for that. And use of Stomach CT is free anywhere in India. Anyone can use it because the government is paying for it. And I think that's something we need to look at more closely. Just to have a uniform platform, we are in the process of developing this integrated health information platform or IHIP. This IHIP process is on and we hope that in a month or so it will be awarded to some and once it is in place there would be a lot of uniformity. I mean, standards compliant modules would be there. Those of you who are aware, the Ministry of Health had actually notified the EHR standards way back in August 2013. The revised edition, the second edition came out in December 2016. And if you look at it, obviously Stormwind City is one of the major things in it. But other than that also, we'll be having different modules which are compliant to the standards so that people can pick and choose. And there's a platform for exchange of health information, of course, in a meaningful way. I don't know how many of you are aware, but the National Digital Health Authority is being set up and it has now found a place in the National Health Policy 2017, which was released very recently, just a few weeks back. The National Digital Health Authority is in the process of being set up and it will be regulating all the activities under the umbrella of digital health. So that means e-health, telehealth, mobile health, because the future actually is for telehome care, mobile health and those things. So lots of things like the internet of things, IoT, wearables, those things would all be playing their role. But to have an environment which is facilitated and regulated properly so that we don't land up in a mess which some developed countries have landed because of the legacy systems. We are starting in a more systematic way, in a more standardized way. And not only we have notified the standards, but we are also trying to facilitate through this IHIP and also the details, the regulations would be notified by the National Digital Health Authority, which should be in place sometime by this year. This is a very old slide, but this slide I love very much because if you look at it, the date 2003, so almost 14, 15 years back, this was actually given, this was a part of the document, the first document for the IT infrastructure and health. That time it was the Ministry of Information Technology which had brought this out. Of course, this URL that you see on top is no more existing, but at that time it was available in the public domain. And here also if you look at it, if you think about IT infrastructure for health, the standards occupy the most important part. Of course, legal framework, education and training, or capacity building, those things are very much important, but standards definitely have a major role to play. This is the standards that I was talking of. The second edition of the EHR standards from the Ministry of Health, it was notified in December 2016. And if any of you are interested, you can have a look at it. Of course, the URL is there, but you can do a simple Google search. Google will take you there. So don't worry about remembering the URLs. If you look at the Snowmed City distribution, this is how the Snowmed City is globally. And of course, India is very much there in the map. So 30 odd countries are already members and more and more are becoming. And we'll definitely urge every one of you to have a look at it. So this is the platform that I was talking of. So this integrated health information platform, it will be based on the cloud. It will be Aadhaar enabled. There will be a health information exchange or repository central or federated, those things are there. But anyone, whoever is interested, whether the healthcare providers or citizen patients, research academic facilities, anyone can have a two-way exchange of information through this. And all the modules that would be hosted here would be compliant to the standards which are notified in that document that you saw. 
As I said, the National Digital Health Authority is being set up to have an overall looking after these. This is something of a thing which probably, as I said, I mean, the world is very fast moving towards it. So everything would be connected, smart objects and IoT for ML. Almost everything will be connected to everything else. I won't go into more details of it. But one very important thing, as I said, the good thing about standards is that there are so many of them. So we actually need to harmonize. So as I said, the Ministry of Health has notified the CHS standards for health information exchange. Similarly, if you look at the TEC, which is the equivalent of ITU, the Indian equivalent, they have been propagating the standards for NPM, or machine-to-machine -machine standards. BIS, the Bureau of Indian Standards, is also having a panel on smart infrastructure. And when we talk about smart cities, it's not just the city alone, but everything. Even homes are smart. And when you are talking about smart home, active assisted living AAL or healthcare is very much an integral part of it. So there are things of it. Uh, it is. It may be coincidence that I do belong to all the three committees, but there are also a lot of overlap. So we really need to sit together, and as I said, the previous slide that I showed, how they are connected. Everything is connected to everything else. So we need to really look at the big picture and think of it doing in a nice way. So there's a EHS standards help desk in the National Health Portal. If any of you are interested in that, I think you're most welcome to visit it. And I think that's all about the presentation. So if you have any questions now or after the session, most welcome. Thank you.